Welcome to your YouTube channel. God bless you. You are about to listen to a message from the throne of the Almighty God in the lips of the pastor. Your blessings are with you as you listen and pray along. For any inquiry, partnership, and prayers, please check our YouTube page for contacts as you click the select icon. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified on upcoming videos. And do not forget to share. God bless you. Shall we pray? The Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will come before you because of the mighty God. We pray, Lord, as we look at your world now, we will touch every life here and every life across the airwaves in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know that you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. Today, we shall be looking and answering the call of the Almighty God, part 1, round 61, in the subtitle, The Priest, The Prayer, and The Prospect in Disappearing whatever troubles us last week we look at the disappearance of whatever troubles us but we didn't look at the position or the role of the priest the role of the prayer and the role or the prospects in such disappearance and so we should be looking at this subtopic in two perspectives but before then we'll be looking at the introduction First Samuel chapter 14 verse 18 and so said unto Ahia, Bring hither the ark of God. For the ark of God was at that time with the children of Israel. But the first Samuel chapter 14 verse 9, and it came to pass why Samuel talked unto the priest that the noise that was in the host of the Philistines went on and increased. And so said unto the priest, Withdraw thy hand. Let's look at our role, the role of the priest and the place of prayer in disappearing whatever is troubling us or whatever troubles us. We're looking at that now. We're looking at the role, the role of the priest and the place of prayer in disappearing whatever is troubling us. Now, as part of the introduction, look at 1 Samuel chapter 14 verse 18 again. And Samuel said unto Ahia, bring hither the ark of God. For the ark of God was at that time with the children of Israel. Behind every good success is a spiritual backing. Every boldness to take on challenges comes with the creator of life, the almighty God. King Saul understood this fact and had to call in high priest Ahia to bring in the ark of the almighty God. Now, the ark represented the presence of the Almighty God in their camp. It was their spiritual shield and buckler. With the presence of the Almighty God, victory for them was sure. Yet, King Saul was not assuming. He took his time to plan militarily against the Philistines before he called in the priest. Now, this teaches us that having a desire is a first step before approaching the Almighty God for help. King Saul conversed with the high priest Ahia, and as he did that, the slaughtering of the Philistines by the two-man army, that's Jonathan and Samuel Mira, intensified. This is another lesson that as we spend time discussing our desires with the Almighty God, our troubles will disappear from our lives. The Bible recorded that King Saul was with the foot soldiers for some time, before Jonathan and the Samuel Mira disappeared before they left that place, before they went into the camp and took the responsibility of fighting the Philistines by themselves. Now, when King Saul was informed by his watchmen that there was this kind of noise or this kind of disappearing or melting, he called in the high priest Ahia to bring in the ark. And as he spent time with the high priest Ahia, and the sound of the slaughtering intensified. That's very key. If you look at that now, there must be a desire. As King Saul was spending time with the foot soldiers, it is likened to the hour or the period of desiring, planning. And before he could go to the war, he called in the high priest to bring the ark. That means talking to the Almighty God. When you have a desire as a student to excel, and then you bring in the ark, you bring in God. Is very, very, very key. When you have any plan to carry out, anything to do, whatever plan that you have, as you plan, now look at it. King Saul had 
adequate foot soldiers to take on the Philistines. He was not looking at his military capacity. He was not looking at his military prowess. He was not looking at what he could achieve. Rather, he didn't even say, well, Jonathan and his armor bearer were even doing the job already. And with these hundreds of foot soldiers, they could do more. Rather, he called priest Ahia to come with the ark, which means he did not depend on himself. These are critical things we need to look at. That we should drift our mind away from what we feel we can do and drift it to the Almighty God. The Holy Spirit wishes to speak to us in two points. Point number one, planning and prayer in disappearing whatever troubles us. Point number two, priesthood and prospects in disappearing whatever troubles us. Which means, if you look at point number one there, when we plan, when we desire, and then we we'll pray, then the actualization of whatever troubles us will come to pass. And then when we inculcate opposition, priesthood in whatever we are doing, and then the prospect of disappearing whatever troubles us will also come to fruition. Planning and prayer in disappearing whatever troubles us. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 19a. And it came to pass, why Saul talked unto the priests. And it came to pass, you have a priest with you. Wherever you are right now, listening to the sound of this voice, you have a priest with you. Indeed, you are a priest. If you are a genuine Christian, having people that are looking up to you. A priest could be your pastor that has the fear of the Almighty God aside, a physical priest, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, is your indisputable high priest. Deliberately getting him involved in your desires is planning for success. Get Christ involved in your desire. Then you are planning for success. Now we understand that the loud sound from the camp of Philistines, King Saul was not moved by what he heard. King Saul was not moved by what he heard. He was not moved by that. Ordinarily, once you just hear the loud sound like that, the next thing would have been, jump, fly, move, run quickly, get to the scene. No. He maintained his school for a while. And then called the high priest here. Come quickly, bring the ark of the Lord, which means there was this part of his heart that he has given to God that without God he can do nothing. He didn't say, I have hundreds of foot soldiers with me, we can do this. After all, something was already happening there. He called Typhus Ahia, get me the ark. Now, that leads us to recognition of the Almighty God helps drives away our troubles. When you recognize the Almighty God in your trouble, then that trouble will disappear. In Psalm 141 verse 2, Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense, and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. In Psalm 143 verse 1, Hear my prayer, O Lord, give ear to my supplications in thy faithfulness, answer me and in thy righteousness. Now, before King Saul made that contact, he had a desire or a plan to overcome the Philistines. When he knew it was time to get into the battle proper, he got in touch with the high priest. Now, that contact is likened to praying to the Almighty God I've said before. Now, we should understand, as we desire, get God involved. Let's get God involved. In the middle of thinking of our desires, let's get God involved. Just after taking steps to actualize in our desires, let's get God involved. And while in the middle of fulfilling the desires, let the Almighty God remain involved. If the Almighty God is at a pre-plan level, after the pre-plan level, at the middle of the, of the plan in our lives, and after the plan, we only have cause to be joyful in the end. And the prayer points for you and I are, let us pray to be steadfast with the Almighty God. Let us pray to get the Almighty God engaged in whatever we do. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. That is also point number two priesthood and prospect in disappearing whatever troubles us. Look at 1 Samuel 14 verse 19b that the noise that was in the host of the Philistines went on and increased. And Saul said unto the priest, withdraw thy hand. He has spent time with the priest already. He has tapped spiritual strength already. And now he knew that it was time to go now. Withdraw thy hand. Now let's look at this now. Your personal relationship with the Almighty God is very key to maintain a healthy spiritual life. As you keep your relationship with the Almighty God secured, greater blessings will trail you. 
Outside other relationship, please have the relationship with your Creator, the Almighty God. He's all that you need. Now, we understand that the noise for the camp of the Philistines increased as King Saul spent time with the high priest. This showed the humility and faith that King Saul had in the Almighty God as the only source of success. He was humble. He had faith. He had the men with him. He had the strength. He had everything that could go into battle. But yet, he said, within him, I cannot go without God getting involved. Get the art high priest here. Now, he was not swayed by the number of the battle-ready foot soldiers with him. On the second thought, he believed the source of the ultimate success was the Almighty God. We shall be looking at trusting the Almighty God and not our capacities. In Psalm chapter 1, verse 6, verse 3, Put not your trust in priests, not in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. In Psalm chapter 1, verse 4, 6, verse 4, his bread goeth forth and he returned to his head. In that very day his thoughts perish. In Psalm 1, verse 6, verse 5, happy is he that the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is the Lord his God. When you put your hope and trust in people, all you get is disappointment. When you trust in man whose bread goeth forth and the next thing in six feet under the grave, and you trust him, man, he will do this for this for me this year, that next year, next month, and before then the person is gone. But look at Psalm 7, verse 6, verse 5. Happy is he that had the God of Jacob for his help. Let's have God of Jacob for your help. Put your trust in God, not on your sister, not on your brother, not on anybody. Your trust in God. Trusting the Almighty God could be easy if you have the fully thought pattern running through our minds. Here's the key. Look at it now. I was blessed when the Holy Spirit was revealing these things to me. I said, Lord, after the service, Lord, I'll, I'll, I'll start the process. If you will allow this thought pattern to run through your mind, then we'll see incredible results. I will see the troubles, anything that troubles us disappear, number one. That our lives belong to the Almighty God, not our own, in the real sense. You start saying it. Start at this life does not belong to me, it belongs to God in the real sense. Number two, that we have no pride or ego to keep. Because it is not your own, so what are you keeping? What are you preventing? Then number three, that we are only a channel of transmission of the power and presence of the Almighty God here on earth. Which means everything that runs through from everything within you is, is of the power and the presence of the Almighty God. Number four, that we have totally abandoned ourselves to the Almighty God with no trace of selfish interest. You abandon yourself. You give up this life. This one belongs to God now. Then number five, that it is true that we may have human support. But our hearts do not truly really rely on them. Our only trust is the Almighty God. Yes, of course, the people that will support, the people that will show kindness, of course, God bless their souls. But you don't even trust them. Your trust is still in the Almighty God. Then number six, that we do not bother about the outcomes of our lives. And that the choice of God, the Almighty God's outcome is preferred by us. The people work themselves trying to see how the best their life can turn out to be. And because of that, they are driven by so many things, driven by so many things, do this and do that in the process. Some get killed, some get into covenants of the devil, so sell their souls. God, I want my life to become like this, so that they will not say like, it's like this. All of those things now, if you are having faith and trusting in God, that is not your concern. It is God's outcome for a life that you prefer. And number seven, that we are doing our bit as human beings, but our steps in life are fully dictated by the Almighty God. Yes, of course, because we are trusting God, we are still making our efforts. You know, but whatever it is, is the Almighty God. If we take these seven ingredients and we imbibe these seven things, then our language will change, our actions will change, and we will not be looking at people. Because when you put your trust in God, He knows exactly what to do. He knows who's to move. He knows what to do. He knows what to do. I repeat again, number one, that our lives belong to the Almighty God and not our own in the real sense. Number two, that we have no pride or ego to keep. Number three, that we are only a channel of transmission of the power and the presence of the Almighty God here on earth. Number four, that we have totally abandoned ourselves to the Almighty God with no trace of selfish interest. Number five, that it is true that we have human support, but our hearts do not really rely on them. Our only trust is in the Almighty God. Number six, that we do not bother about, our, about the outcomes of our lives, and that the choice of the Almighty God's 
outcome is preferred by us. Number seven, that we are doing our bit as human beings, but our steps in life are fully dictated by the Almighty God. And the Lord will help us. Because this was a state that King Saul was. Because he saw himself, he saw the 501, over hundreds of foot soldiers, yet he saw, he heard. He knew something was happening there. He didn't jump. He said, call the ark. Because out of the abundance, the man speaks. Get me high priest A here. Get me the ark. His heart was there. As he was desiring, as he was planning, his heart was on the ark. We shall be looking at doing the will of the Almighty God. It's a question in Psalm 143 verse 10. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God, thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Because if we want to be upright, we'll do away with all these evils, all the sin, the masturbation, the pornography, the online and physical prostitution, the sugar daddy and mommy practice, all the evils in the world, all this transgender all the using of the evil creams in the world to keep a kind of completion that God has not given to you, transmitting yourself, all the science lies, all the action lies, all the selfishness, all the murder, all the hatred, all the abortion related practices, all the evil desires, all this wickedness that was seen in the world. And you see somebody drinking with one hand, packing a coin in his mouth, and still calling the name of Jesus from his own lips. And still say he's serving the Almighty God. You see somebody smoking with the other finger, and he's still calling Jesus from his own lips. And you say he's calling on the Almighty God. You see somebody going to church, you see charm in a pocket, on his pocket, you see charms all over, you say he's being smart and wise. There is no eternity in heaven for such people. All these evils in the life, all the oppression, all the parental irresponsibility, all the sowing seed of this God. You want to tell this person about this other person so that this other person will not be nice to the other person. All of these things will hang in six feet. And there's eternity either in hell or heaven. Whatever you do now will determine whatever your outcome of life will be. All of this evil, the Lord wants us to repent. Repent of all of these things now. And the Lord will help you and I. And the prayer points for you and I are, let us pray to be fully immersed in the trusting the Almighty God. Let us pray to remove our hearts from trusting human beings. So let's an action point number one. Your life becomes easier if you totally jet in sin it to the Almighty God. So let's action point number two. Spend time in the presence of the Almighty God for your victories. So let's action point number three. See life in the perspective of the Almighty God. So let's action point number four. Let the Almighty God lead you in all that you do. And number five, which is very, very crucial, and I love this, recklessly and righteously abandon your life to the Almighty God and you will not regret it. The Almighty God is all in this life and in eternity. Recklessly and righteously abandon your life to the Almighty God you have hazard your life that like Paul did in the Bible days. You recklessly and righteously abandon it to the Almighty God. And the question is, have you given your life to the Almighty God so that whatever is troubling you will disappear? If you are there listening to the sound of my voice and you have not given your life to Christ, the Lord is saying you should give your life to Him now. And just say after me and the Lord will help you through. Father, in Jesus' name, I come before you because you are the mighty God. Lord, have mercy upon me. Write my name in the book of life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know that you have done it for me. I promise you I won't go back to evil anymore. In Jesus' name I pray. If you have prayed that prayer sincerely, congratulations. Lord, touch every life. I pray, Lord, there will be redemption for every soul. And those of them practicing religion will have this real experience. With the Almighty God, with you, O oh Lord, let them receive the power of sonship and daughtership in Jesus' name. We we'll pray, O oh Lord, that we'll see beyond the temporality of life or the transition in life. And we'll know that, yes, there's life hereafter. And there's the Almighty God waiting all eternity to judge every man according to his or her work. I pray, O oh Lord, this reality will dawn on us now. And I will recklessly and righteously abandon our lives unto you in Jesus' name. 
Thank you, Lord, because I know that you have answered. The torrents of life, the storms of life will not swear us in Jesus' name. Our capacities, our abilities will not deceive us in Jesus' name. But you are our trust. You are our confidence. You are our capacity. You are our ability. You are our proficiency. You will provide for us and then we'll look inwards. You always help and lead us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know that you have done it. A week of success, a week of greatness, a week of prosperity, a week of preservation. In the mighty name of Jesus, touch every life. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. Thanks for listening to the message. The blessings await you as you obey and pray along. For any inquiry, partnership, and prayers, please check our YouTube page for contact as you click on the select icon. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified on upcoming videos. And do not forget to share. God bless you.